Hello, uh, my name is Grant Shangru. Uh, this is my talk titled Bard Bivamax, Publishing Music with Emacs. Um, I'm a software developer with Unabridged Software in Lincoln, Nebraska. Longtime Emacs user, relatively new Emacs hacker. And uh, hopefully I'll be able to show you my workflow with how I publish music with Emacs. All right, so um, as a musician, I would like to publish my music online. You know, I could publish with popular online music services, but I'm more of a DIY type, so I chose to go ahead and publish with Emacs. So what's the motivation behind this? Um, well, a lot of it comes down to some fundamental freedoms that, uh, you know, Emacs, GNU software kind of represent to me, um, as well as kind of my ideas on culture and my background. Um, I don't believe that music is a consumer good. Um, it's a form of knowledge, like an algorithm. Um, and it's just like such a part of culture, like in tribal cultures, music was seen as a gift from the cosmos or the gods. And it was a gift maybe through an individual vessel, but was shared with the people and shared with everyone, kept alive by the culture itself. Um, and so, to me, music is something that should be shared and should be freely enjoyed by everyone. Um, of course, artists should be compensated as well, but that's a whole different topic. Um, and so when I want to share my music, I want to do it without impacting anyone's freedom. Using GNU software like Emacs is a good way that I can ensure that um, I won't be requiring people to uh, sign away their freedoms for anything. There's a lot more I could say about this, but I don't have time. Uh, feel free to reach out to me by email or IRC. Um, and part of the motivation for me personally is that Emacs is super magical. It's an all-in-one solution. Like I said, the GNU software aligns with Creative Commons ideas. I can do file management. I can author HTML, all the web stuff I need, even a literate style. I can handle media and metadata. I've got version control, remote server access. All the tools I need are right under my fingertips with this tool that I use every day for a long time. I don't need to look elsewhere. And it was a challenge. I wanted to see if I could do this all within Emacs itself. So how do you use Emacs to publish music? Well, for me, I needed a couple of things. I needed to be able to audition unlabel unlabeled audio tracks. I have a lot of files that I don't know where they came from. I don't know what they are. I need to be able to listen to them. Um, and I need to be able to add metadata to whatever audio format it is and rename the files based on that metadata potentially. Um, and in the end, I wanted to take those files and programmatically produce a web page um, for people to consume. I found out that Emacs scores 100% on all of these requirements that I had for this. Um, and a lot of that came from EMMS, the Emacs Multimedia System. Um, EMMS is, is great. Um, if you haven't checked it out, please do. It's a little bit unintuitive, but once you get into it, you know, it works. Um, and basically what EMMS gave me was the ability to listen to the tracks, organize playlists, and on top of that, it gave me super-powered metadata authoring. And I'm going to demonstrate that to you. So in order to do this, um, you have to require markable playlists. Um, so require EMMS mark. And so I'm going to go through and I'm going to open to red. Um, I've got this this, these files here. So as you can see, these files are mp3s. Um, they're recorded on a digital recorder. Um, if I had the choice, I would have a recorder that used a different format, but so be it. So I can mark all these files and I can do ems add to red. And now they've been loaded into a playlist. Um, so you can see the playlist here. There's some leftover files. So I've got these three files in my playlist. And as you can see, it's just the file name, the path. I don't have any metadata associated with them. In this playlist, I can hit E, capital E, and it'll bring up a buffer showing um, the tag information that I have. And so I could um, edit these here, and I could edit them one at a time, but that's not really great. I want superpower metadata authoring. So by marking them, um,
by marking them, I can then hit E and I have all three of the tracks loaded up in this tags buffer. On top of that, I can do EMMS um, tag editor set all, control C, control R. And I want to set the artist. So these are some recordings of my family. So Shanger Lux, set all three of them. I want to set the album, um, Spring Walk with Lap Harp. And I want to set the year. And then um, I'm going to go ahead and put these in manually. Um, but with the power of Emacs keyboard macros and registers and so on, I could do this um, programmatically as well, which would make it a lot easier if I had met much more than three files to do this with. Submit the changes with Control-C, Control-C, and now we've got the playlist. You can see the artist and track number have been updated here. And then the final piece of this is that um, if you look at this, you can see that the file name is still the same. So if I were to look into the directory, I would still have this file name. Um, when packaging these up for a release for people to download, it's nice to be able to have that um, file name re reflect the track number and the artist and so on. So there's another command, MMS um, rename tag editor rename so it could be just capital R I think I need to mark all of these hit capital R and then it's going to ask me to confirm I'm going to say yes to all of them um, and now if you look in the dread whoops I have to update it you'll see it's been updated with the artist the name track and track number and track name um, so this format is a format string, so it's customizable, of course. Um, I just decided to go with the default. So that's pretty great. This workflow, um, just with EMMS, I didn't have to do anything. This is all there, it's all, all built in. Um, it gave me exactly what I was looking for in terms of being able to process a lot of raw audio files, um, add metadata to them, and get them ready for publishing. Um, and this is for publishing for playback um, in any media player. It'll, it'll be useful, not just for the web page that I'm building. So the fi final part, of course, is um, to build the web page. And Emacs makes authoring HTML trivial. Like, as I was going through this, I wanted to challenge myself and just be like, can I do this with all, just all with Emacs? Like, can I just make this. I don't need a I don't need Ruby, I don't need Rails, I don't need Node, I don't need any of this other stuff. I I have my tool right here. It's a fully it's a whole operating system basically plus programming languages. Um so the first thing I started with was um buffer scripting for manipulating text. Um that's kind of the easiest way to do it and basically anything you can do in a buffer you can do programmatically with Elisp. Um so this might be a good example for beginners if you haven't done any Elisp yet. Um, like a simple example is to create this this div output here. Um, I can you can use this with temp buffer. So basically, create an imaginary buffer. Insert is just like typing. So you put strings in, you put new lines in. Concat builds some strings together, and here you can see I'm I'm doing a random number. So every time I execute this, my content changes. So I can generate dynamic content in HTML blocks um, with Elisp. Um, for my web page builder, it's a little more complex. I'm pulling data out using EMMS um, data structures. So it's pulling that out um, from the track data, and then I'm, I'm using some program, program to generate list elements. So each track is going to have the title and track number and then a button for playing it, plus the source of the audio file, which will get added here. Um, right now, this is hard-coded for Opus, so it won't work for my MP3s. Um, I'm going to skip over snippets. Turns out format strings were good enough for me. Um, snippets could be useful, but uh, format is super powerful, and I didn't really even need all that much power. Basically, just doing string interpolation. So if you haven't seen format before, you basically put these control strings or control characters inside of a string, and you can generate um, 
you can generate an output string that you want. So in my generator code, basically it's down here. Um, I'm calling format with this barred bevomax template. And that's basically a big, a big string of HTML. It's just H, you know, my whole page of HTML with a couple places with those control characters in just four places. And one of them populates the track list. That's really the meat of the program. Um, and again, this is a combination of using um, buffer scripting, using HTML mode, inserting text, format strings, and then I can indent re region so the HTML actually looks pretty um, when it comes out of it as well. Um, I will show that just really quick, actually. So you can see this is a HTML that got generated. I've got my template. I inserted the title here, um, the style, the font was all inserted. Um, and then this whole list of, of tracks here, it's kind of messy to look at. Um, but this track list, this whole div here is all generated by my generator code. And it works, it's great. Okay, moving on. Um, so the other thing was that as I was developing this, I decided to use Org Babel and some of its features um, for multi-language things because I needed to style it with CSS and, and put actions in JavaScript. And also I used SVG for authoring stuff. Um, and it was a little bit complicated. I probably probably would have been sim simpler had I not used Org Babel, but it's also really fun. And it's I think it's a cool cool idea to use literate programming. My idea was to create kind of like HTML components, like I could name it like this, um, put a format string inside it, and build a function in Elisp to format it and spit out the HTML that I want. And by doing this, then I can like uh, just change things in my org file, which not getting a whole lot of time to work on it, I can come back to it and I have a, lo a lot of notes and I can, I can kind of generate things as I'm going and, and keep notes for myself and keep the, I don't know, it's cool. Literate programming's fun. Um, so I don't need to go into that too much, but you can see if I execute this here, I get the, the div that I want. Um, it's a little bit funny. You'll see I have the string like this, the way that no web expands. I can't do this on a single line. It, it, it looks funny when you do that. Um, so that might be something to work out later. Um, CSS blocks can either be tangled out and referenced in this, the HTML source or inlined. Here's an example I have of inlining it. So I've got my little CSS block named style, JavaScript named script, and then I've got this HTML source block with no web expansion. Um, these double angle brackets here are where I'm going to expand the block name style. I'm actually calling a function, so I want the result of the function here, and then the script will just get um, expanded here. So or babel expand source block. You can see what it looks like. You know, I've got my style here, I've got my title, I've got that main content class I showed before, and the script as well. So that's kind of cool. Like I could just run org babel tangle and get my thing out and just edit one file instead of multiple files. Not for everyone, but I, I thought it was kind of fun. All right. Oh, and the final thing is that in Emacs, you can author and view SVG. So this is just an org. Um, this SVG I used to make the play and pause buttons, but I didn't know this. But if you edit an SVG file, you can toggle back and forth between um, between the code and the and the image. It's pretty sweet. So I can kind of iteratively work work through this because of of how Emacs is like that. So um, final considerations here, like when doing this, I want it to be all free. So I want to use fonts that use a free license. I found GNU Unifont. It's kind of cool. Um, the content license I chose Creative Commons um, Attribution Share Alike, which is kind of like the GPL. Um, ideally, I could serve it with Emacs. Um, I'd like to remove idiosyncrasy so other people can use it. Um, it's pretty much just my tool right now. Um, not requiring the web browser, I can ship playlists so that you can just, you know, click or link to a playlist in your uh, favorite 
player, even EMMS if you want, and then packing up those albums in like a zip or tar file. So um, you can go to churls.world. Um, it just has a link to this album. I'll display it here in just a second. Um, you can contact me. I'm Shoshin on Emacs in IRC and on SourceHut. Uh, you can email me, grant at Charles World Personal or grant at Unabridged Software. All right, now uh, let's see about this. This is up online, so if you want to listen to my um, college band's album from 20 years ago, here it is, Cassiopeia Basement Days. Whoops. I made this art in Krita. You can press play. You can skip around. I did. I do have the playlist up here too. So, um, yeah. Thanks for listening. I hope you enjoyed it, and enjoy the rest of Emacs Conf. Goodbye. <laughs>